Are you ready to 3D print? Hey everybody, it's Joe. And if you just found this video because you're trying to figure out how to go from Blender to 3D printing, that's okay. This is the video for you. There's lots of great information here. But if you have done the previous video, then you are probably looking at your own snowman. And this is mine. It's a snow bunny which I realized I could have done a lot more with if I had thought about that before I started instead of just throwing bunny ears and the tail on a regular snowman. But never mind, this is my snowman, and I hope that yours is pretty darn cool too, and I'd love to see it on my socials. But this snowman was made with just basic objects, so if we go to wireframe mode, we can see that our objects are all just kind of overlapping. In fact, do you see my scarf in solid mode? It's, it's, you know, looks like a scarf, but in wireframe mode, we can see it's actually a torus, a donut. It's kind of half sticking out. And I, I think you've probably had an opportunity to do some clever things like that. In fact, take a second and let's just talk about how impressed I am at how far you've come. When you started, you might've thought, oh man, Blender, it's just, it's too hard to use. Everybody's telling me it's got this hard learning curve, but you got over that. In fact, you got through it and you're doing really, really cool things with it already. You are on your way to being a blender master, but there are a few things that we need to talk about. Let's get started. Now, the first thing that we need to talk about on this model is that with all these shapes overlapping, we're going to run into a problem with some slicers where Okay, the name of our problem, the name what we're trying to fix here is called manifold. That is to say, not the car part, but the mathematical idea of being manifold. And to explain that, I'm going to really quickly turn on, uh, just, just do some drawing here and, and check this out. So have you seen the movie Dumbo? In the movie Dumbo, uh, the, the cartoon, Dumbo starts blowing bubbles and then he starts blowing bubbles that aren't necessarily bubble shaped and yet they're still bubbles they behave like bubbles if you took them and and hit them with a pin and poked a hole in them the whole thing would pop and break and go away but then he also blows bubbles that are like super super detailed character shapes uh, uh, they they're shaped like various different animals and and they're weird looking but at one point in the in the cartoon two of these animals try pushing you know these animal shaped bubbles try pushing into each other and when they do what happens to them well one of two things could happen to them and i think both of them happens in the cartoon but uh either they'll pop or they'll join together and become just one shape and and where they join together will just kind of disappear and that's that's actually kind of what we want to have happen because otherwise if we leave them as two overlapping shapes well how could that possibly work well, what could happen is that instead of joining together where they get really really close to each other they don't actually touch and so what you end up with is two weird shaped bubbles with a hole of the outside <laughs> between them but then these are still separate objects. And so if these two separate objects were to say, I don't know, be thrown in a 3D printer and tried to print, they wouldn't be touching except on a very small part and they might fall apart. And that is very likely what will happen if we try to leave objects overlapping. Uh, of course, depending on the slicer, different slicers react to this differently. But let me clear this all out and then let's go back to looking at our, our snowman. So looking at our snow person here, yeah, we have that exact same problem where two of these objects are overlapping and what it might do, what the slicer might think is that the area between them is actually the outside. And so it'll print them with just the smallest of contact points and that'll be a failure. So how do we fix this? Well, just like the elephants, we want to make these two objects become one object and get rid of the bit in between them. And the way that we do this is with a technique in Blender called 
modifiers. Now, modifiers are super duper powerful, and they are something that, quite frankly, we are barely going to scratch the surface of in this video, but we will do a deep dive into them later. But here's how we do modifiers. Notice on the right hand side of our blender window on the top is the outliner, but below that, what is this? Well, this is our properties window and the properties window is actually made up of a bunch of different sub tabs. The tab that we have selected right now is the object properties and it looks like an orange square with highlights on the corners. And obviously there's a lot of properties we could go into. This is a powerful panel, but the one that we want looks like a blue wrench. And that is the modifiers property. So click that blue wrench tab. And now we're in modifiers, select the body base or, or the bottom most circle of your snow person. And then in add modifier in that modifier type, click add modifier. And oh, look at all these modifiers. There's so many of them. How could we learn them all? Well, one at a time today, we want the Boolean modifier. So click on Boolean. And now we've added a Boolean modifier. We're going good. Now the Boolean modifier, and I'm going to make my view just a little bit bigger so that you can see it. But the Boolean modifier has options for intersect, union, difference, operand type, operator, solver. Whoa. <laughs> Boolean is another mathematical idea that joins two things, but it can join them in different ways. It can join them so that where the two objects overlap is the only thing that's left afterwards or where the two objects overlap, it gets rid of the second one from the first one. That's difference. But what we want is it to union the two of them together to make two into one. And under object, the object that we want to do that with is the second sphere up. So we're taking the first sphere and we're adding the second sphere to it. And so how do we do that? Well, under object, you could click that box and then choose the named object. That's why we named our objects. And that's, that's very good. But instead of doing it that way, I'm going to use a little eyedropper on the far right of that box, click that eyedropper, move into the 3d view and click the object body and boom, we've got the body selected. Notice how now our object base extends up into the object body. And if we go into wireframe mode, something interesting is happening. It's like part of it's missing, but the top one still has the bottom part of it there. Well, that's because the top sphere that we booleaned onto this didn't go away. It's still there. It's just being used to modify the bottom sphere. But if we could look at the bottom sphere all by itself, and in fact, we can, what we want to do is, is hide all of the other objects so that we can just look at the one that we're, we're dealing with. And there's a couple of ways to do it. Now, one way is in the outliner view. Do you notice next to all of the objects, there's the name of that. And then on the far right of it, there's an eye and there's a camera. And if you click the eye, we can make things disappear one at a time. And we could do that. We could do that for all of them. That's the long way to do it, but there's another way and it's much more efficient up in the, uh, I believe it's the object view. Yeah, object menu. So in the upper left hand side of the 3D view, there's that menu view, select add object. And under object, if we go down to show hide, and then there's show hidden objects, that's alt H, there's hide selected, which we don't want to hide this selected one. If we've got the base selected, we want to hide everything but the base. Well, that's the next one down, hide unselected, shift H. So cool. I'm going to pull out of the menu, make sure I've got the base that with our modifier selected and then hit shift H to hide everything else. And now if I go into wireframe mode, aha, look at this, the, the internal parts are just not there. It's like one solid bubble on the outside, exactly the way that we wanted it. So we're going good. This is fantastic. However, I'm going to hit alt H to unhide everything and bring it all back and go to solid view. If we wanted to do this with every one of these objects, we could keep adding Boolean modifiers and selecting them to union and selecting the head and the one eye and the other eye and the nose and the hat. And, and we could do this one piece at a time, or there's a faster way that we could do all of them. 
under the Boolean modifier for the base, there's an operand type. And that operand type is that it does the operations on an object. However, if we click that drop down, and this is new, this, this didn't used to be an old blender. This is a new feature that they've added. We can do the operand on a whole collection. Now, what is a collection? Well, click that collection. So operand type, switch it to collection. And notice in the outliner view, if you scroll up to the top of the outliner view, it says that we've got a scene collection and then we've got a collection collection. And these collections have an icon that looks like a little uh, box. It, it, that's a basic idea. It's a box that we put everything in. And all of our snowman parts are inside that collection collection. In fact, that's a terrible name. So I'm going to double click on the name collection in the outliner and I'm going to rename it snowman parts. And now if we go down to our Boolean modifier and we make sure that it's on operand type collection, we can select the snowman parts collection and all at once, let's hit shift H to hide everything but the selected. Notice that the body base now represents our full snowman and that is pretty darn cool. However, this maybe isn't the best way that we want to do this. What we really want to do is we want to do this with an object that's outside of the collection because technically the body base is being booleaned to itself within this collection and that sometimes causes problems. So here's what I'm going to recommend doing. Take that Boolean modifier on the body base and let's get rid of it. Do you see the X button in the upper right hand side of the, of the modifier panel right there? Not the panel, but the, the modifier, the Boolean modifier. Click that X. We'll get rid of it. We're back to the base sphere. That base sphere never went away. It was always a part of it. And then we're going to hit Alt H to unhide everything and deselect everything. And what we want is an object outside of this collection. So, well, let's just add an object and I'm going to add, and I'm just going to make it a cube, but I'm going to make sure that this cube is completely inside of the snowman. So I'm going to move it up so that it's inside the snowman. And if I need to, I'm going to scale it way smaller so that you can't see it at all. Now, well, the cube, and I'm going to rename this snowman. This is going to become our snowman, but it is inside the snowman parts collection. We want it outside of that. So how do we do that? Well, one way is in the outliner view, we could find our snowman. We click and we could drag it till it's outside of the collection. And once we see it on the next higher level, we can actually collapse down the snowman parts and see that snowman parts is separate than the snowman, which is on the outside. So that's one way. Another way that we could do this, I'm going to undo that and put that snowman back inside that snowman parts collection. And I'm, I'm going to collapse snowman parts collection down. Just, just keep things tidy. And with that, with that cube, that snowman cube selected under object, go to collection, move to collection. Aha, it's an M key. So that's good. I'm going to come out of the menu and just press M. And then I'm going to put it in my scene collection instead of the snowman parts collection. And boom, there it is. It's outside the collections exactly the way we wanted it. So now with the snowman outside of the collections, I'm going to, in the modifier tab, add a Boolean modifier to it, change it to union, change the object type to collection and change the collection to the snowman parts. And then I'm going to hide everything, but the snowman with the Boolean on it, take a look at it in wireframe. Everything looks pretty darn good. We've got a good snowman and, and the math for it is nice and tidy because we got our object on the outside looking great but there's one more thing the bottom of it isn't flat and 3d prints like to have a flat bottom so that they can have good contact with the build surface so how do we flatten the bottom of our snow person well one way to do it is with another boolean modifier we can we can uh, just add another boolean modifier to a flat cube but before we go adding a cube to the scene we need to be careful if we added a cube right now, it would show up in that snowman parts and be unioned onto our snowman. And then we would try unioning it back out. Oh, that's just needlessly complicated. Instead, we should take the floor and we should add it outside of it. But how, how do we prevent it from being added in our snowman parts? 
Well, that's real simple. Do you see how the snowman parts for, uh, box icon has kind of a gray box around it? That means that anything that we add shows up there. But if we go to the box icon for the scene collection and click it, now notice that that highlight jumps to the scene collection. And now if we add our cube, which I recommend you do, add a mesh cube, notice that it's outside of the snowman parts in the scene collection, not in the snowman parts collection. Now let's take this cube and let's call it floor. And let's scale it in all but the Z so that it's bigger than, than our snow person's bottom. And then we'll move it down a little bit so it's more representative of the floor pretty darn good now let's select our snowman snow person add a boolean modifier this one is going to remain a difference it's going to remain on an object and we're going to do it against the floor here oh, there we go and now our snowman if we look at it in wireframe mode we can see it's got a flat bottom or if we take the select the floor and press h to hide it we can look at our snowman from the bottom that is a nice flat bottom on our snow person. It's looking great. And you know what? It's time to export this as an STL so that we can throw it to our 3D printer. And how do we do that? Well, real simple. Up in file, export, STL. And it's going to take you to the same directory and it's going to name it the same thing as your file was named. And I've already exported this once, but that's all right. Pretend it's not. But we got a problem. If we hit export right now, it's going to export every object in our scene, including all of our snowman parts and the floor. And we don't want that. We just want our perfectly prepared snowman STL. So how do we do that? Well, on the right side of the export window, there's some options and we want to click the selection only option. And I'll tell you what, the fact that that is not selected by default just annoys me, but that's all right. We want to X selection only export STL. And there we go. We've got an STL, but we're not quite done yet. Now, if you're used to windows, then you should be able to navigate to where that STL was created and you'll see the STL file there. And if you're in windows 10, you can right mouse click on it and open it with a program called 3d builder. And if you don't have 3d builder, go to the Microsoft store and get it. And if you open it in 3d builder, now the first thing the 3d builder is going to do is it's going to try and guess at the scale. And you'll notice that it thinks that we made this in centimeters. And that's because, well, we kind of did, we made it very, very small. It should have been made much bigger, but I haven't talked about scale yet. So I let us build it real small, but in 3d builder, if we tell it, yeah, no, it was totally in centimeters, it'll actually scale it up. So it'll work on our 3d printer just fine. So we import the model. And if there were any problems with our model, it would put a red square around it and give us a prompt to say, do you want me to fix it? <laughs> to which you say, yes, please. And it fixes it, repairs it. And then you can save the file and 3d print it. However, if you're not on windows and you don't have 3d builder and you can also play with using Mex mesh mixer, which is another program that I believe is on most systems. So that can also correct meshes as well. But all of these are good ways to prepare your meshes so that it's good and clean and ready to go. And this one's ready to go. So I'm going to throw it at my 3d printer and see what comes out. Now I'm using the multi-material color printing option in my bamboo lab because I have one, but if you don't, it will still look great in single color and heck you could make a project out of painting it or even just leaving it the way that it is. I'll bet it's adorable, but there you go. And I'm going to take this mesh as I made it and upload it on printables. And if you want to upload pictures of your prints as remixes on printables, well, I'd love to see prints of your models on printables. I think that would be real cool. Or you could remix my snowman and just, you know, just because you use this, this tutorial series, it can be a remix for it, but I'd love to see what you come up with, but you know, that's it for now. I want to thank you very much for watching and remind you that you are a child of God and you're special to me. So take care of yourself and if you can take care of somebody else because we all need each other and until next time, I'll see you then.